we can ask the teachers in the labs to our students to join who all I are there informed, in the labs i have informed all of them they are joining So good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Ronak. Good morning. लीना कमल सर ने भी ज्वाइन करा है को होस्ट बना दो Should we start, Dr. Rona? Yes, we can. Okay. Am I yes, you are audible. Okay, ma'am. I am the master of my failures. If I never fail, how will I ever learn? Commemorating 28th February as the National Science Day in the memory of an outstanding scientist, Sir C. V. Raman who kept encouraging younger generations with his groundbreaking discovery. I, Dakshana Singh, final year student of BSc Applied Physical Science with Industrial Chemistry, Deshbandhu College, would like to extend a very warm welcome to our eminent speaker, Ma'am Dr. Ronak, respected Sir Professor Rajiv Agarwal, Principal Deshbandhu College for giving us their consent and support to organize the webinar. Sir Professor Kamal Kumar Gupta, Vice Principal, Deshbandhu College, and Sir Professor Devanandan Kumar, Teacher in Charge, Department of Chemistry, who stood by our sides throughout during the time of organizing this webinar. Sir Dr. I.K. Singh, Coordinator, DBT Star College Scheme, and Sir Dr. Aditya Saxena, 
coordinator IQAC and our program convener, ma'am, Dr. Aparna Shekhar, without whom it wouldn't have been possible. The organizing team members who gave their untiring efforts and yes, the participants in today's session. It is our long-term tradition to start any event with the blessings of Almighty. So we will have a virtual ceremony of lamp lightning and Saraswati Vandana as a tribute to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge. all are blessed now. Let's move further on to the event. We are elated to announce the 70 years of establishment of Deshbandhu College. And on this gracious occasion, once again, I would like to welcome you all wholeheartedly to the motivational lecture series organized by Department of Chemistry under the IGs of IQAC and DBT Star College scheme on the topic Integrated Approach for Molecular Imaging marking 75 years of rapid strides and rediscovering our hidden strengths and synergistic actions to regain our rightful place in the Committee of Nations, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav is a festival of new ideas and commemoration of glorious history of independence and culture. Along the way, DRDO has played an immense role from developing defense technologies to providing great opportunities to the younger generations and conducting various activities in the direction of nation building, encouraging scientific innovations and achieving Atmanirbharta. We are honored to have such an exemplary and tremendous speaker, Ma'am Dr. Ronak, who is a scientist F and joint director at INMAS DRDO Delhi. On behalf of the whole, whole college, I would like to welcome and thank you, Ma'am, for sparing your precious time. Thank you. Now, I request the attendees to write their queries and doubts related to the session in the chat box. A feedback form will soon be cir circulated in the chat window along with the link of our YouTube channel. Everyone is requested to fill it before leaving the meeting room. E-certificate will be issued on that basis only. So I hope you all will participate enthusiastically. A true inspiration and a man behind the success of Deshbandhu College. The person who doesn't need any introduction and known among all of us for his wisdom and his knowledge, our Honorable Principal Sir, Professor Rajiv Agarwal. Well, he's not present in today's event due to prior engagement, but he has sent his good wishes and blessings to all of us. Now, moving on with utmost respect and gratitude, I would like to invite Honorable Vice Principal Sir, Professor Kamal Kumar Gupta to address the gathering. Over to you, sir.
Kamal sir. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Oh. A very warm and bright morning. And warm is the bright is the spirit of chemistry department. I, on the behalf of the Ishpandu College, and my own behalf, welcome Dr. Ron Mack, scientist staff and also joint director, DRDO. I welcome our respected principal, Professor Rajiv Agarwal, DPD Star College Coordinator, Dr. Indrakant, IQSC Coordinator, Dr. Aditya Saxena, senior faculty member of all the departments, all my young colleagues from Deshmandu College, from different colleges, of Deshmandu, of Delhi University and other universities, dear students, participants, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to all of you. I congratulate chemistry department who is always versatile, dynamic and take a lead in organizing events, motivational talk, science series. Special appreciation and congratulations to teacher in charge of chemistry department, Professor Dev Nandan, organizing uh, convener, Dr. Aparna Shekhar. A big applaud and appreciation and congratulations. Today is the National Science Day. My warm greeting for the National Science Day. When think scientifically, observe scientifically, have an attitude and aptitude of scientific thought is a privilege and right of each and every young brain. So uh, best wishes for the National Science Day and let Master Saraswati give all of you a scientific wisdom. Uh, my appreciation, my acknowledgement to the today's speaker, Dr. Ronak, who could spare her valuable time from the busy schedule and to deliver a talk on the, uh, on the, on the very, very interesting topic that is the in integrated approach for molecular imaging. So uh, I know that the field is very recent and it has really absolutely a new dimension so without taking much to hear the two days thank you so much sir now I respectfully and cordially invite Sir Professor Devanandan Kumar, teacher in charge, Department of Chemistry, who stood by us like a pillar to, uh, to come up and address the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Dakshina. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You're clearly audible. Okay. So very good morning to one and all present here. On behalf of Department of Chemistry, Deshwandu College, I welcome Honorable Principal Professor Rajiv Agarwal, Vice Principal Professor Kamal Gupta, uh, Dr. Ronak, today's speaker, uh, scientist at DRDO, all the distinguished faculty members and dear students to the National Science Day celebration. National Science Day, since 1986 in India, is celebrated to commemorate the discovery of Raman effect by Nobel Prize winner, Sir C.V. Raman, a Nobel Indian scientist. Science plays a major role in making human lives better, easy, and comfortable. Hence, it is respected every corner of the world. On 28th February, we celebrate the encouragement of science and its finding in the name of National Science Day. The primary objective of this day 
is to spread the importance of science and its applications worldwide. Proceeding on this line, to celebrate National Science Day this year, the Department of Chemistry, Deshbandhu College is organizing third lecture of motivational lecture series entitled Integrated Approach for Molecular Imaging. With immense pleasure, I welcome once again uh, Dr. Ronak, scientist staff and joint director, DRDO, New Delhi. She has accepted our invitation to give a lecture on very short notice. Dr. Aparna will elaborate Dr. Ronak's field of work. Dr. Aparna Sekhar is very sincere, hardworking and dedicated teacher. She is highly interested in uh, academic works of the college. She is very excellent teacher. I would like to thank Professor Rajiv Agrawal, the principal of our college, for putting all efforts towards the universal development of our college and for motivating us to organize such events. I believe the participants will learn a lot from this lecture. I'm also eager to learn a lot from this lecture. My best wishes for all success of the program, my best compliments to organizing committee members and a student coordinators. Wishing a very happy National Science Day to everyone. Thank you, over to Dakshina. Thank you, sir, for your enthralling words. Now, with due courtesy, I would like to turn the time to ma'am Dr. Namita Gandhi, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, to take over the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dakshina. Uh, good morning to all. A respected speaker of today, Dr. Ronak, Principal Sir Professor Rajiv Agarwal, Vice Principal Professor Kamal Kumar Gupta, Teacher in Charge of our Department, Professor Devnandan Kumar, Program Convener, Dr. Aparna Shekhar, other faculty members and dear students. Sky is the limit when it comes to learning new things in science. Wishing a very happy National Science Day to all those who have a vision for science. First of all, let me introduce you to activities under DBT Star College scheme. Five science departments of the college, with biochemistry, botany, chemistry, physics, zoology, have been supported under DBT Star College scheme. Through this scheme, the college seeks to augment its interdisciplinary approach through new learning methods, exposing students to later, latest innovations and researches, which are of current relevance to their curriculum. Many minor projects are currently running in each of the science department, which you can check on the college website. In our department, under the ages of DBT Star College scheme, one activity is running as the wall magazine by the name Reactive, which has been running online during COVID-19 for the students of BSc Chemistry Honors and BSc Program Applied Physical Sciences, uh, Industrial Chemistry to express their creativity. We will be again shifting to physical mode and the creative work of the students will be displayed on the notice board of the department. It provides a platform to our students to showcase their reading and writing skills, as well as increase their interest towards the current events in the field of chemistry. I would request all our students of chemistry honors and industrial chemistry to participate in the monthly activities of the wall magazine Reactive. They should also keep on checking the department website regularly to get the updates about the various activities of the Department of Chemistry. On this occasion of National Science Day, an online cover page designing competition was held for the upcoming international e-conference of our department on the theme, Recent Advancements in Chemical Sciences, Health, Environment, and Society. I am hereby happy to announce the result of this online cover page designing competition. I request Dr. Lena Agarwal to share the slide of results with you all. The first prize winner is Atulya Rajavanshi, BSc Program, Applied Physical Science, IC, third year. Second prize winner is Muskan, BSc Program, Applied Physical Science, IC, second year. And third prize winner is Palakpal, BSc Program, Applied Physical Science, IC, third year. Uh, many of the, uh, I think the end, all of the entries were rather from the industrial chemistry. So I would like to encourage the honor students also to take part in such kind of competitions. 
congratulations to all the winners and thank you very much dakshina to please take it forward now thank you ma'am now with great utmost respect and honor i would like to invite ma'am dr aparna shekhar associate professor department of chemistry to take over the session thanks dakshina and thank you namita for sharing details of dbt star college scheme and the upcoming conference being organized by the department of chemistry deshpandu college it is indeed a pleasure and privilege to welcome the eminent speaker and esteemed participants to today's webinar organized on the occasion of national science day 2022 This day holds special importance for those who believe in science and scientists and those who enjoy the fruits of scientific discoveries. February 28 was des designated as National Science Day by the government of India in the year 1986 to honor the contributions of Sir C V Raman to research and discovery. the day is celebrated in schools colleges universities and other institutions to motivate the future generations we too at deshbandhu college have organized a lecture to mark the day it is a proud moment for us to have the speaker from one of the premier institutions drdo which is involved in development of defense systems life science missiles and in fact was involved in testing and certification of ppe kits during the covid pandemic welcome dr ronak scientist f and joint director at inmas drdu delhi a brief introduction of the speaker dr ronak obtained her doctorate degree from the department of chemistry university of delhi which are also celebrating the 100 years of their establishment in the year 19 uh, 2005 she did her post doctoral research from 2005 to 2007 in karolinska institute sweden and then joined drdo in the year 2007 she is involved in development of peptide imaging probes used in oncology design and synthesis of molecular imaging agents for non invasive imaging with 60 publications in highly reputed journals she is also on editorial board of national and international journals and is principal investigator and co-investigator of research projects related to wound healing and neuro onco imaging she is the recipient of prestigious icnm international fellowship for biomedical young scientist in the year 2014 and technology group award from drdo in the year 2009 i welcome dr ronak once again to this online event and now invite her to address the participants over to dr ronak thank you very much dr aparna for uh, introduction but uh, first i would like to thank uh, Uh, principal sir dr rajiv agrawal for inviting me and uh, giving this opportunity for this talk and uh, i also i would like to extend uh, my thank to the vice principal uh, professor kamal gupta ji and uh, the head of the department and the whole uh, uh, department of uh, chemistry of deshbandhu college and i would like to congratulate you all for completing 70 years of your uh, Uh, for, of your institution and also would like to extend my thank uh, to diksha uh, to uh, and all the uh, esteemed member present here and students and thank you very much for uh, every each and every one to give me this opportunity it is my privilege and honor uh, uh, to give this talk uh, so let me share my ppt with all of you i hope i have made a presentation in a way that i will be able to motivate a bit uh, let's see we will discuss in the end of our talk or uh, that uh, and then let me share your my talk with all of you
Can you, uh, Dr. Aparna, can you see my presentation? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we can yes, see Yes, it is visible. Okay, it is visible. So can I start my presentation now? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, it is my pleasure and privilege or honor to give this talk on Sir C.V. Raman's day uh, because we all know he is one of the most prominent scientists India have. And my talk will be focused on the molecular imaging or the diagnostic imaging for the, the various neuro-oncological disorder. But before uh, going to uh, the, the specific topic, first I would like to commemorate uh, the discovery of Sir uh, Raman effect, uh, which we do celebrate today's day on 28th of February the, uh, as a National Scientist, Science Day every year. Uh, and uh, for this uh, discovery, he has received Nobel Prize in 1930 the, for his work on the diffraction of light. It, and uh, he was not only the first Indian, but also the first Asian scientist who has received this Nobel Prize in any branch of a science. And, so, and the theme for this every year, the, the DBT and the DST provide the, the theme for the National Scientist Science Day. And this year theme for the National Science Day is integrated approaches in science and technology for sustainable future. And I found the theme is very apt for this particular year because the way all uh, scientific community and institution has worked together to fight with the COVID-19 in the last years, it was really commendable. And so uh, you must be knowing all this information, but uh, what uh, actually fascinates me about uh, Sir C.B. Raman is that he used to say that you have to ask the right questions. And when you will ask the right questions, the uh, uh, nature will open the door to her uh, secrets. And, uh, and he was, uh, was uh, very much curious about the nature. Uh, and he wants to, he was so curious that he wants to understand each and everything thing around him do exist in the nature. Uh, and uh, uh, he, uh, being a Nobel laureate, he has uh, uh, immensely contributed uh, in the field of science. Not only he has contributed, but his uh, uh, perspective, his ideology uh, toward the life and science in, uh, makes him a great scientist to look up to. Uh, and, uh, uh, but what uh, exactly, and uh, uh, one, one of the important thing that, that when he said that you have to ask questions, he asked question himself also. And, uh, and his curiosity actually leads to the discovery of Nobel Prize because one day on his trip to the Mediterranean Sea, he found that a glass of water uh, has no color, but uh, the deep sea, which is having the same water, has a perfect, brilliant blue color, which, which he could not understand the phenomenon. But he was so passionate about the science that he has, uh, 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 you know, uh, started uh, conducting an experiment in the ship itself, whatever uh, uh, instrument he was having on that time. Um, and, uh, and, and actually on that time, that scientist was having that belief that uh, the sky, the, the, ship, the blue, the water, or the sea is blue due to the refract refraction of uh, the color of the sky. But it was him who proved that, uh, that uh, it was not uh, due to the color of the sky, it was the water itself who uh, uh, scattered the blue light more in comparison of the other color of the light. And that leads to the discovery of the Raman effect. Act, uh, and uh, like his uh, uh, curiosity, he also have some interesting fact about Sir C. V. Raman that he started this scholarship at the age of 13. He, uh, he has a deep interest in working in the magnetic and the electric anisotropy. Uh, he was the first Indian director of the Indian Institute of Science. And uh, more interestingly, he has opened the chemical and manufacturing uh, company, which do exist today in the, uh, in the name of TMC Limited, where he manufactured potassium chloride. It, he was the first professor uh, after the independence, and he has awarded the India's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna. Uh, and uh, what amused me in all of his interesting fact that he was able to publish his first research paper on the skirting of light when he was only a graduate student. 
and uh, and and if i frankly speaking i myself was able to publish my first paper when i was doing in phd and so i would like to say here that you all should take a motivation from this and try to write a small review or communication whatever uh, science topic you have an interest you must write that at uh, but before uh, going to that at uh, many things about sir cb raman inspires you fascinate you motivate you uh, so any one of you or any of the student would like to comment on that or give us an opinion that uh, what exactly about sir cb raman inspires in you dakshina you want to say anything or any other student okay so if not uh then uh, i would say that every individual is the same by birth uh, and what makes one individual differ from the other it's its contribution his achievement and uh, and his uh, 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 perspective towards the life if uh, and uh, uh, i have no doubt in saying that sir cb raman is one of the example or if i say that sir cb raman is the epitome of this is uh, and uh, 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 he has immensely contributed being a novel laureate itself elf uh, and has a very good perspective about the life and some of his quotations is really motivates me and i hope uh, they will motivate you also so like one of them is the as dakshina was also mentioned that i am the master of my failure if i never fail i will never learn and so uh, he, here he wants to you know emphasize on uh, the the importance of the failure in the journey of success as uh, uh, according to him and actually it is true also that no one is perfect until and unless you will learn from your mistakes and he used to say that failure is the best teacher in this world. Word. and another quotation which is very fascinating is the success can come to you by the courageous devotion to the task lying in front of you and uh, in this he wants to uh, to communicate to all of us that uh, uh, we should never lose any kind of opportunity whatever we receive in our life be it a small be it a very large or massive whatever you want to say uh, because and you take those opportunities with the with the, with full dedication and uh, complete those tasks with the uh, uh, full knowledge that will lead to your success and i also agree with his opinion because in my opinion and uh, whatever uh, you uh, uh, choose in your life or whatever you get in your life if uh, you grab that opportunity but what is most important here you hold that opportunity with full dedication until uh, unless you will not hold that opportunity you will not be perform that or complete that uh, that opportunity with full dedication and uh, and uh, and uh, and he has a belief that knowledge is a two way sharing and uh, and he believe that the student who derive benefit by working under the guidance of a professor vice versa professor benefits actually and and i have faced this many a times because i have a many phd student registered under me and i have a two type of a student and uh, it's like one type of a student phd student he never had any problem and uh, and the another type of a student he has always have a problem problem not in terms of uh, personally problem in terms of a science in so uh, so if you will ask the student who never had a problem that how is this your project is going on so he will simply say to you everything is perfect uh, he was able to synthesize uh, the the material characterize it blah 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 but when you ask a student who has always had the problem problem in in the means that he understand and uh, and he try to understand that what is going on with particular reaction when you ask him the same question he will say that uh, he has synthesized the product but he has received got only 80% of it and he got some side product and he has analyzed those side products and we have to discuss that at uh, what, uh, what and how we can use that side product is it useful or it is not useful so that's how you we benefited mutually so knowledge is definitely a two way sharing and one of the important uh, uh, quote he used to say about life you cannot always choose who comes into your life 
but you can learn what lesson they teach you. So it is very, very important because uh, it's in this world, we have uh, good situations also and the bad situations also, but uh, we have a habit of only following the good uh, situations or the good people. Uh, but we, but what he wants to uh, let us focus on that we should uh, learn uh, art from the bad situations also because that give you a lesson that how could you uh, stand up in the adverse condition or in the the condition is not favorable to you uh, so so and uh, and he has a belief that you young people are the the growth of the country and i do believe the same him uh, so in my opinion and uh, 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 to all of you that you took uh, you definitely try to uh, learn uh, you know, from your failure instead of the desire and not be disappointed it, uh, whatever opportunity you have it you take it hold it and uh, finish it with full dedication and most importantly share your knowledge with everyone and uh, as uh, he was uh, not only a good perspective about the life but he was also a very good visionary and he said the science of today is the technology of tomorrow and he and he was very perfect in saying that because if you look into it that uh, uh, the uh, this is the raman family tree of uh, the Raman techniques, where is the conventional Raman spectroscopy leads to the, the more complex surface enhanced, resonance enhanced, and uh, time and uh, uh, especially resolve uh, Raman spectroscopy. And this complex Raman spectroscopy has multiple application in uh, pharmaceuticals, biomedical, health sciences, material sciences, forensic, geology, archaeology, and many other. So I have uh, selected a few interesting examples to understand the, uh, the application of the Raman spectroscopy in, uh, in these fields. Is, uh, I will be taking a few examples and then I will be, be focusing on the molecular imaging. In, uh, so let's move to the first example. This is the, uh, in this, uh, they have utilized the Raman application by the subsurface analysis of this uh, blue mantle of Christ uh, sculpture of Osiko Sacred Mount, uh, which is the heritage site in the Northern Italy. And uh, this uh, blue mantle has been repainted in, uh, several times over a century. So the stratigraphy has been uh, uh, compromised and it, comp and, it, and it contains a number of layers. So so here the Raman spectroscopy has been used to elucidate the stratigraphy of this blue mantle and uh, generally people have a belief that it contains only the ledgerite but by the help of the Raman spectroscopy they were able to find that not Excuse only the ledgerite. Uh, extremely sorry to interrupt you ma'am. Aapki actually slide, your slide is uh, stuck on the first uh, slide number where the topic is written integrated approach for molecular imaging. Now? No, ma'am, no changes. Now? Nothing yet, ma'am. Okay, let me share one more time then. Sure, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, you please share in the advanced mode. Yes, ma'am, now we can uh, see. Uh, I think it is on fourth slide now. Can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you want to present me again or should I continue? Uh, no, ma'am, you can just enlarge it. Okay, this is the full screen. Uh, Ma'am, you can go in uh, slideshow and then you can uh, move to fourth slide. This is the slideshow only and in the full screen. Come, come. What is uh, Chandan, what it is uh, they are saying, they're not able to see it. But this is the full screen only. Is it visible now? Uh, ma'am, it is visible, but it is zoomed out. Zoomed out. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Is it fine now? Is it visible now? Uh, Dakshina, can you yes, see yes, the slide now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, so can you see it here now? Can you see the next slide? Uh, ma'am, that is a pie chart, uh, that flow chart. 
No, that is the slide on the application in archaeology. Roman application moving from discovery to application. That is the slide we can see. Mm, you so you are seeing this slide only. Yes, ma'am. So I'm I'm on the next slide. So are you able to see the next slide? No, ma'am. No. no. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. You please stop share it and then share it in the advanced mode. Ma'am, abhi ab jayegi fir. Ah, now you share it. A uh, share screen. Then in the above you will find basic, advanced. So go in the advanced one. Hmm. Abhi find kar rahe. And then PowerPoint. Can you see it now? Ah, now. Yes, ma'am. What? Which slide you are? Uh, it visible to you now? Application in archaeology. Okay, so I am just scrolling. You just see that you are able to see it or not, and then I will continue with the lecture. And if you want that, I should start from the beginning. Let me know. I will do it again. Sure, ma'am. Now, so I am not able to move it. <laughs> Call the IT guard now. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, in the slide only, you will get one option. One, two, three, like this. You on the slide, if you will see, na, ha, huh, that you can, ha. Huh, now you are able to uh, do it. So now you are able to see it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So on scrolling, also you are finding a new slides. Yes, ma'am. Now, we, yes, ma'am. We can see it now. Fine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I can go ahead, and then if any time you will not see the slide or there is no change in the slide, please let me know, Dakshin. Sure, ma'am. Right? So, do you want to me continue from here, or uh, do you want that should I start it all over again? No, ma'am. We can just continue from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry for uh, the uh, inconvenience. Mm -hmm. No, if no is issues. Then you come back. So I was discussing in this slide that I have used Raman spectroscopy to understand the 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 different layer of the the, the changes in the stratigraphy of the different layer of the paint. And uh, generally, they were able to find there is only one uh, 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 lazurite is present in this stratigraphy. But by the help of the Raman spectroscopy, they were able to see uh, the lazurite, uh, and also there is a certain amount of a Prussian blue is also present in this paint. And uh, they have published this method. Uh, the authors has published in 2016 in the certain journals. Also, uh, are you able to see the next slide? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Applications. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Uh, another good application uh, in this, what they have uh, tried to understand by the help of the Raman spectroscopy, that uh, they have seen uh, the the how the human remains will preserve when they are subjected to the mummification. And uh, so this is the uh, the mummies of the tomb of the two brothers uh, from 2100 BC, and uh, they have performed uh, this experiment in the or they have run the Raman spectra of his skin in 2003, and they were able to see the presence of the amide one and the amide 3 which is the correspondence to the certain protein in the human skin so uh, and also some de de disintegration of the protein was also observed so uh, so they have uh, concluded in this paper that uh, uh, ancient Egyptians has a uh, use a very good method to preserve the mummy and which they were able to uh, confirm by use of the Raman spectroscopy so very recently I have uh, gone through the one article uh, where uh, they have uh, combined the graphene in with the antibody and the antibody has been designed to target a spike protein in the coronavirus. Uh, so, and, uh, and what did they do? Uh, by the help of the Raman spectroscopy here, they measure the atomic level vibration of the graphene sheet when they are subjected to the COVID positive and the COVID negative sample. And uh, what is their observations? So they observed it, it like uh, when they have, there is a change in the vibration of the graphene sheet, it when they are subjected to the COVID positive sample saliva, uh, and there was no change in the, uh, the vibration of the, the graphene sheet when the negative sample subjected to it. So you understand and see the power of one Raman conventional Raman spectroscopy has lead to the more complex Raman spectroscopy he is uh, being a chemistry student I will not be able if I will do the explanation uh, to these complex uh, Raman spectroscopy this will not be just to Sir C.B. Raman also so uh, I would not uh, detail the, the intricacy of uh, those uh, uh, techniques in large but I will be more focused on application 
application only. The, and as you all know that uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy has the predominantly used uh, as the uh, for the as an analytical tool for uh, our uh, chemical uh, analysis is, uh, but it is also a good, uh, it's an optical microscopy, which has a very excellent sensitivity. So researchers have combined this unique property for imaging and uh, to understand the spectral analysis of the molecular interaction in cell population. So that's why they have have used in the in vitro imaging thing, and then uh, they have also uh, lead, take it to to understand in the preclinical animal model at the in vivo imaging. So in the in the in vitro imaging, they have uh, tried to find out the specific Raman signal uh, due to the chemical changes is uh, when they are invaded, when the disease invaded it. And uh, for in terms of the in vivo applications, and so they have used the molecular imaging agent where they have uh, synthesized the the specific uh, like, uh, nanoparticle and uh, then they have injected the, the nanoparticle uh, in the mouse house and uh, leave it for the circulation for the certain time period and then they have set up the mouse and try to take an uh, image with the help of the Raman image setup and if you see this is a very beautiful image of the liver because nanoparticle has a tendency to accumulate in the liver. So you see that even we can use uh, the, the spectroscopy in the in the biomedical imaging in the biomedical sciences. So moving to the my topic what is molecular imaging and why it is required. Uh, Dakshina, can you see the slides now? Dakshina, the slides are yes. visible? Uh, yes, yes. ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, if we talk about the, the, the molecular imaging, So molecular imaging techniques is a non-invasive imaging and uh, it is safe and painless and it is used to diagnose and treat of a different type of a diseases. It can be cancer, cancer may be a different kind of a cancer and the neurogenitive diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinsonism, uh, thyroid, liver cancer and many other diseases. And uh, it is basically helps in the visualization and the characterization of the complex biochemical pathway within a normal and the disease state and, uh, and at the molecular and the cellular level in the human and the other living system. Molecular level means here that even you can understand the changes at the receptor and the enzyme level. So one of the good example for this is uh, the FDG, which is a fluorodeoxyglucose, uh, which is uh, uh, clinically used worldwide to diagnose the um, uh, cancer. Uh, and not only one cancer, it has been used for the, the different type of a cancer. Uh, and, uh, and that uses the glucose metabolism as a process, which I will be discussing in, in slight detail in the later slides, in the later slides. So we can synthesize uh, the specific uh, molecular imaging agent for a specific application like I have mentioned and uh, that uh, we can uh, use it for the cancer imaging, we can use for the neurogenitive disorders uh, for the diagnosis and the treatment and but uh, it's a several key steps involved in this. It is important to know to all of you when you start your uh, PhD or your career in this field, it is certain things are important. It's not important that what your guide will give you and you will synthesize side, you must learn that how uh, you can uh, yourself design uh, certain uh, molecule in terms of the chemistry for any specific application. So for this application, and first you have to select a biochemical process or pathology, which you want to non-invasively visualize. And then you have to go to the molecular targets that will allow the direct and the indirect visualization of a target of interest. So what is the difference between two? Uh, to understand it, let's say I'm taking an example of cancer. So if you will take a cancer as a pathology or a biochemical process. So there are, uh, uh, this is the number one you have selected as 
the cancer. But then you have to go for the specific molecular target. So for selecting the specific molecular target, there is no only there is not a one type of a cancer do exist in the earth. There are many type of a cancer like prostate cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer. And for each cancer, there will be a molecular targets and there will be a different molecular target. So you have to emphasize on the specific molecular target, which you want to look into it, which you want to work on it. And then you can go ahead in selecting the imaging modality and imaging modality. I will be discussing on the coming slides. It's, and then let's focus on the chemistry, which is plays an important role in any of the application. And, and the chemistry, we have to do a lot of fine tuning in terms of that, that the, every molecule must contain the targeting moiety and the signaling moiety. So we have to, uh, according to the signaling moiety, we have to take a cyclic chelator or a cyclic chelator, which is which which is which must be having in uh, four nitrogen or two sulfur as per the coordination number uh, present uh, or at as per the coordination site required for the the radio tracer to be conjugated with that particular uh, agent. And then we have to do the, the optimization of the labeling. In, and the optimization of the labeling is also depends that which uh, tracer you are using. Are you using a spec tracer? Spec tracer requires a different kind of a radio labeling and PET tracers require a different kind of a radio labeling. So accordingly, you have to optimize those protocols. And then you have to perform certain in vitro and the in vivo experiment to understand the suitability and the selectivity of your design and synthesize novel molecular imaging agent. And if to take it to the clinics, you have to do the, some computer modulation to understand and uh, the exact uh, uh, phenomenon in the uh, in the imaging. Thing. And then you have to go with the the uh, FDA approval, and then then you can use this molecular imaging agent for a specific application. And the development of molecular imaging agent specific, I will uh, focus on the specific molecular imaging agent and creates a paradigm shift in the healthcare uh, due to the uh, because and uh, because it provides a, a specific insight into the human body and that allows physicians to look into uh, to for physicians to personalize the patient care. So what does it mean? It means like individually they can look into uh, the, the they can diagnose and they can give the specific treatment for the each and every patient as per what the diagnosis result is. So as far as the molecular imaging and the diagnostic is concerned, you can uh, visualize or you can. Uh, and uh, see the many changes which will not be able to see from the other anatomical imaging like uh, uh, x-ray and the other uh, imaging uh, modalities is and then you can diagnose and stage and staging meaning here that not only you can find where do what is the exact location of the cancer in your body it can be in the whole body or it, it has just affected only one particular area so you can easily diagnose by the help of uh, diagnostic imaging thing and uh, not not only this and what extent it has been in spread this also can be be uh, diagnosed by this imaging technique he can then accordingly physician give you the treatment and monitoring and most important thing is the follow-up uh, once you say that you are uh, free from the cancer, but it is always important to see that uh, because the reoccurrence of the cancer is very common. So which can also be done with the help of this imaging modalities is um, so as I have talked in the previous slide, PET, SPEC, CT, MRI. So there are two kinds of the imaging modality exist. One is for the anatomy, which gives you the anatomic information. And the other one, you can understand the biochemical changes. In the, anatomic, uh, in the anatomical changes or information, you must have uh, heard many a times that MRI and the CT is commonly used. And uh, for the, the biochemical changes, you can uh, use the PET and the SPEC. PET is a positron emission tomography and spec is the single photon emission computer tomography. Uh, and like any other modality, these modalities also have their pros and cons. cons uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, what are the difference uh, in terms of uh, their, their difference in their uh, 
uh, special regulations, uh, the depth of uh, evolution, are they are using ionizing radiation or they are using a non-ionizing radiation and, uh, and detection threshold. So detection threshold plays in a very important role. If you look into this slide, it, uh, the maximum uh, sensitivities for the optical imaging, which is in the picomolar range and, and the nuclear imaging has a sensitivity in the, in the nanomolar range and the MRI in the micro molar range and so on the ultrasound and so on. But we will be focusing or I will be focusing on uh, the nuclear imaging modality because they have proved its efficacy in the human and in the rodent and rodent means here the animals. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so nuclear medicine is a type of molecular imaging where radioactive pharmaceutical are used to evaluate those processes. Radio radio uh, radio pharmaceuticals are the radioactive drug which is used for theranostic application in tracer quantity. Theranostic means that they are used for the diagnosis and the therapy both. And each radio pharmaceutical is consist of a two uh, um, uh, part. One is the pharmaceutical and another is the radionuclide. So pharmaceutical which is used to molecular structure determining to the fate of the compound within the organism, which is for the particular application. And the radio tracers are the radioactive nucleide responsible for the signal detectable outside of the organism. So now I will be focusing on these two. First, I would uh, like to discuss with all of you that how we could design a new pharmaceutical and then what are the radio tracers and how can we select them. Um, so, so designing a specific imaging probe, it plays an important role. And three things are very important in designing a specific imaging probe or radio pharmaceutical or tracer, you will find many alternate name in the literature for this. Okay, so, so three things, one is a signaling agent and uh, second is the targeting moiety and then third one is the linker. Uh, linker is plays an important role because it attached the signaling agent and the targeting moiety together. If we talk about the signaling agent as the name implies that it will help in the giving you the signal and that can be obtained by the radio tracers and radio tracers we can select on the basis of that which imaging modality we want to utilize. It, let's say we want to utilize the SPECT imaging uh, uh, for the imaging uh, for, for visualization or for the diagnosis of the imaging agent, then we have to go uh, to the, the gamma emitter radionuclide that is 99 technetium or indium 111. And, and if you want to use or utilize the PET imaging modality, then we have to uh, use the tracer which are beta emitting like fluorine 18 or gallium 68. And the targeting moiety will be your vector, which will target to the receptor, or we can say it's a, a biomarker, which will be very specific, one is specific diseases. So we can, uh, and the targeting moiety, not only this, even the small molecule, but some receptor specific peptide, then protein, then antibody or antibody fragment can also be taken. And then, as I have said, the linker plays an important role. All in It's not only connect uh, the chelator and the vector, but it also minimize the, the action between in uh, or interaction between the signaling agent and the targeting moiety. So it is very important. We should not be affect our biological vector by the, the effect of radiation or by, uh, by, the, by the, the conjugation with this particular chelator. Uh, so four, three important things you have to always keep in mind when you are uh, going ahead with any noble uh, imaging probe, the linker length and uh, what is the linker flexibility, what is its hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity and the charge is it positive or negative or neutral. So the, after uh, keeping in mind these important aspect of designing any imaging probe, you can synthesize any imaging probe very easily and then you can go ahead with uh, the targeted molecule. Like I have said that you have to select the receptor. In the molecular imaging, there are a certain specific molecular targets. Like uh, this is the alpha v beta 3 integrins, these one type of a receptor and the VEGFR are the one type of a receptor. If you want to target androgenesis in any cancer processes, then you have to work on these kind of a receptor. If you want to work on the prostate cancer, then beware the, the gastrin uh, GRP peptides or GRP receptors are overexpressed. So you have to target it, uh, these kind of a receptor. So if you want to ta uh, ta target the gl glucose metabolism, then you have to target the glute receptor or LAT receptor adapter. 
So similarly, so you can select which specific receptor you want to target and then accordingly you can select your peptide or your small molecule and then you go ahead with the synthesis and developing a new imaging agent. And if you have to develop any brain agent, then you can and work on the, and the dopamine type of a receptor or the other brain targeting agents. And so like, and then you can target the serotonin receptor, dopamine receptor, and uh, uh, like CXCR receptor and the other receptors. Uh, so so, so going to the uh, to the radionuclides, it's uh, on the nuclear imaging. In, as I have said, the two type of uh, 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 tracers are available. One is uh, which is the gamma emitting, which is the used in the SPECT uh, emission, uh, positron emission tomography, and the PET, which is a beta emitter, which we use in the positron emission tomography. So uh, what is the difference between both of them? So in the single pot, uh, positron emission tomography, radionuclides emits the gamma rays, which is detected by the collimator and image is constructed. And, and these kind of uh, uh, radio tracers, uh, it is a generator of uh, synthesized uh, radio tracer. So we can easily get it from any generator. Uh, while in the positron emission tomography, he, uh, uh, the electron combined with the positron and result in the annihilation. And that give the result of the two photon of a similar energy in the opposite direction. And, and that is detected when read to the scintillator in the scanning devices. So basically the difference is the PET is more sensitive because there is a two gamma rays and SPECT is less sensitive in comparison of the PET. But however, SPECT has its own advantage, is easy availability, low cost, in comparison of the PET imaging agent. And, uh, and uh, what I want to convey here that how you will, uh, whenever you, uh, how you will diagnose by using these imaging agent. So when you inject uh, any uh, PET imaging agent to the uh, human, so what you will detect outside, these gamma rays you will detect. And at the basis of that, whatever image you will get in the scintillator and the scanning devices, you can understand that what extent and or where it is exactly located. It, uh, like uh, SPECT uh, tracers, we can um, synthesize or we can get it from the the generator, but PET synthesis, but the PET tracers, we cannot get it from the any generator and we have to have an in-house cyclotone. So we have the in-house cyclotone at in mass, that is a 16.5 MeV cyclotone and, and uh, where we accelerate the particle in the cyclic pathway and then it gets, uh, and, and that then they get the energetic and these energetic react with the nucleus to form a new isotope. Oh, oh, and uh, the reactions, as you all will be aware of, then we irradiated proton on the O18 target, we will get the F18 and the neutron will also be emitted to conserve the charge and mass during the reaction. So these all uh, are uh, radioisotope like F18, O15, a carbon 11 and nitrogen 13, we are in a radioisotope, we can synthesize is at our center and we can use for further uh, imaging. And these are the some useful metal ion which we use for the imaging and the therapy like uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. We use for the positron imaging thing or uh, for the PET imaging and the gamma as I have mentioned many a times now, the technetium we use for the SPECT imaging, beta like lutetium, yttrium for our um, uh, therapy. And similarly, we also use some alpha particle for radiotherapy. Uh, but before going into, um, uh, into the details, uh, Dakshna, are you able to see my slides now? Yes, ma'am, clearly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So before going uh, into the details further, uh, first I would like to convey to all of you. So whenever uh, uh, in future, if you have to work with the radioactivity, we have to be very careful in taking the precaution because precaution is must because we have to understand that what uh, type of a radiation we are working. If we are working, we mostly work with the alpha, beta and gamma. Mostly with the alpha particle has a less penetrating capability. So they will be not harmful to you. But gamma has a penetrating capability and they can penetrate your skin and your, they can reach to the body. So the precaution is important. Alpha particle, you can simply stop by a sheet of paper. Like if, if it is any imaging agent which is labeled with alpha particle and if you will put it in the paper like that, the this will not able to cross uh, the alpha radiation and it will stop here only and, and, and follow 
follow its mechanism. And similarly, for the beta particle, you can stop by the layer of clothing. So like simply, if you are having this clothing, you can an inch of substance or inch of a substance also, you can and, uh, and, uh, uh, stop these kind of a radiation. But for the gamma rays, because they are uh, the more penetrating thing, so you have to have a lead to stop uh, these kind of a radiation. So whenever we work with the gamma rays, we do synthesize uh, these kind of a radio pharmaceutical having these kind of a radio tracer, but we take a precaution and we always do the uh, synthesis or radio labeling behind the lead shield only. So this everything uh, will done under the lead shield. Uh, so these are the few important uh, radio pharmaceuticals which is already used in the clinics, which I thought that you must know it to take the motivation and uh, like uh, we use O15 for the cerebral blood flow, and importantly, we use methanin for the tumor protein synthesis, dotanoc, gallium 68 dotanoc for neuroendocrine imaging, and FDG, which I have already told you for the glucose metabolism. But what is important here is the half life. Half life is important because it's then the radionuclide will be decayed, and then you will not be able to use it. So you see the half life of O15, it's only two minutes. It's a very, very less as uh, uh, you know, uh, decay uh, time because it is very difficult to work with these. Within two minutes, you have to finish everything, which is very difficult. So mostly focus on on these radio pharmaceuticals or in radio tracer is on the F18, which is in 110 minutes. And these are the certain 99M technetium um, radio label uh, spectre radio pharmaceutical, which is used in the perfusion imaging and the renal imaging and the and the other imaging studies also. So, so as I have said, the, the F18 has been very useful for the imaging due to its half-life because it's 110 minutes and that is long enough to perform even the complicated chemistry or labeling. And most importantly, because we have to inject in vivo and the carbon protein bonds are also generally stable in vivo. And, uh, and, uh, and why people are selected more frequently this fluorine molecule? Because many drug molecules contain fluorine that is a possible candidate for labeling. And also it gives you a freedom that uh, you can uh, uh, generate the F18 by the electrophilic substitution also and the nucleophilic substitution also. The chemistry is also very versatile. Okay, so why FDG PET in tumor? This is the clinically uh, used radio pharmaceutical worldwide and they what does it measure? So what is FDG first? So FDG is a fluorodeoxyglucose. So this is fluorodeoxyglucose. What is the difference between the glucose and the fluorodeoxyglucose is that at the glucose, there will be a two hydroxyl, uh, the, there will be a hydroxyl group at the two prime, um, uh, which we have substituted or by the manu, by the triflation reaction using the manose triflate and, uh, sub, uh, and uh, by the inversion, we have the fluorine group here. So this particular molecule plays an important role to understand a different type of a cancer. And uh, because we can measure the elevated glucose as a metabolism in tumor. Uh, and what is the principle of mechanism? Why it do take up because if you talk about the glucose and at 18 FTG, there is a one difference only at the two prime. So glucose and FTG both are transported into the cell and phosphorylated. So glucose on phosphorylation gives you a glucose six phosphate. It and then it further uh, by the in the presence of the enzyme, it goes the fructose six phosphate pyruvate and then leads to the citric acid cycle and some of it the anorbic respiration. But uh, at 18 FTG, it also go on the phosphorylation and converted on the FTG, FDG 6 phosphate. But due to the presence of the fluorine group, it is uh, it is not metabolized further and does not take part in the further cycle. And then it is get accumulated in the proportion of the glucose utilization. So whenever there is a tumor conditions or there is a cancer conditions, then you can see the difference and so that the uptake as per the uptake of this fluorodeoxyglucose was uh, and uh, the one of the important aspect that, that as I mentioned that you have to be be take a very uh, you have to be take precautions when you work with the radioactivity. So the question can come that then why you are why we are using uh, these radio tracers in the imaging modality if we have to take a precaution or it can it can create a, some kind of a radiation to the particular uh, human. Uh, so what I want to tell told you or uh, told you all that. 
that whatever tracer we do take, uh, tracer principle do exist with these kind of a diagnostic imaging agent. So we use these tracers in uh, these uh, radionuclides in a tracer quantity. Tracer quantity means a very, very, very small quantity. And to understand that how much small quantity we do use, if you see that uh, uh, if we uh, able to generate a FDG in this 50 gigabacterial uh, activity, but do in, we do inject in the per human only 10 millicurie, or you can say the 400 megabacterial. So that is approximately 1.14 nanogram we are going to inject. And if you have to understand that how much small quantity is this, if you're at home, if you will take a teaspoon of a sugar, so one tea of a, uh, two teaspoon of a sugar generally contains a three gram of a sugar. And if we will look into the each grain of the sugar, that will having a 0 0.4 milligram of the sugar. So you understand and you see that how much minimal quantity in comparison of a 0 0.4 milligram of a sugar we are injecting in the human. So this much of a uh, quantity does not have any harmful effect on the human body. So that's why we are using these kind of a tracer quantity of these radionuclides in the detection of the cancer or neurogenitive disorder. As I have said that um, we have to take up precautions. So, so we have an automated synthetic mod modules for these uh, routinely utilized uh, 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 cancer diagnostic agents uh, like FTG. So if you see that uh, we have the, the, the uh, what do you say, the modules, uh, modules, and then in these modules, you have what you have to do. You have to design a strategy, or we can we say the time list. Then uh, at what time it will take for the synthesis. What time uh, the it will take the radio labeling. What time it will take uh, for the purification. And then as per the time list, we can feed to the computer and computer will automatically synthesize the FTG. It will first it will take a radio tracer from the cyclotron and then chemical reaction will take place according the time or heating time or room temperature, whatever we have given. And then it will purify it over the cartridges and then we will get it it under the uh, the light shielded uh, uh, the uh, vial uh, this FDG uh, we can receive it it and which has been used for the diagnosis and the monitoring of the treatment of the cancers uh, so and as far as the mm, and the other molecule which we use for the diagnosis and the disease progression of the Parkinson's disease in human, this is also clinically approved uh, and used worldwide for uh, this diagnosis. And what we did here uh, in India, uh, because uh, we are the only center where we you can find these kind of a uh, uh, radio pharmaceutical and specifically the Abdopa type of radio pharmaceutical, we have optimized the protocol and developed the indigenized time list is to modify the procedures and the procedures we have modified the solvent reaction time and to improve the yield. So what is the meaning of the reaction time here I want to convey because as I have shown you in the previous slide, the half-life play an important role in these kind of a radio tracers and F18 has an 110 minutes half-life. So we have to plan our synthesis from uh, synthesis to radio labeling to purification that everything we need to finish in 110 minutes only. So first, what we do, we do first manually within a small amount of activity. And when we standardize the protocol, we do the automated synthesis. So you see that we have synthesized the automated and also in the, the we check the purity of the synthesized because we have to inject in the human. And we also have a lot of quality control before uh, injecting into the human. So we have to follow those protocols also. So like we have to see, is there any tracer amount of the solvent and is there any amount of the remaining activity is there? What is the specific activity? Is there any amount of the reactant is there or not? So accordingly, we have to take a call that can we inject this to the human or we have to discard this batch. This also we have to do time to time if the synthesized radio pharmaceutical is not up to the, the quality control. So you see in the, in the radio HPLC, we checked it the purity also. And as I have said that it is used for the Parkinsonism and uh, the FDOMA, DOPA, 
basically it, it is an anti parkinsonism drug uh, which is uh, take a uh, up, which they, which measure the uptake in the dopaminergic neuron it is a neurotransmitter and uh, as you you must you all must be knowing it it and plays an important role in the medication and the movement and it is a very important radio pharmaceutical so so this uh, all uh, what uh, general thing i want to convey to you all uh, regarding the molecular imaging and slight focus us on um, on my, on the work which we are doing at inmas uh, it's not in uh, very detail but the few things i want to tell you so we have developed the 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 peptide which is also this is also clinically approved and used in the practice for the neuroendocrine tumor and why we want if it is already approved and why we want to to uh, put our efforts toward this because this is is highly costly and not easily available in india and uh, then we have connected with the the cyclic chelator and then we have designed the cyclic chelator in a way that uh, the we can use for the spect imaging so the uh, so the coordination number will be fit for the 99 technetium also for the gallium 68 also and also even for you we can use for the mri if required by incorporating the gadolinium um uh, uh, paramagnetic ion so so the, uh, so you have we have uh, developed a versatile uh, synthetic protocol for this and uh, this is clinically used again and then uh, we were also working in on uh, as i have showed you in the targets that if you want to work on the cancer and want to target the angiogenesis as a process which targeted by the alpha b beta 3 integrins in uh, and uh, and uh, we, uh, we have synthesized at uh, our center and uh, then uh, we have gone to the in vitro and in the in vivo uh, studies and then prove that actually it is going to the tumor site it, it is a long back it's a quite old work uh, and the another target which i have shown you on the prostate cancer are uh, so for this particular application as i have mentioned that we have selected the grp receptor type, subtype which is over expressed not only in the prostate cancer but also in the breast cancer also in the small cell lung cancer also different type of a cell cancer also So, so we have taken a bombesin peptide but what in terms of chemistry what i have done here that we have taken a unnatural amino acid we call it is an unnatural amino acid uh, that that is amino isobutyric acid we have taken because it contains both amine and carboxylic group so we said it's unnatural amino acids it's uh, and we have uh, put it that unnatural amino acid to make uh, in terms of the chemistry to make to give the rigidity this peptide so it uh, so it target the receptor in a way that it should retain its activity so these kind of work we are also doing it at our center hmm. this example i have specifically taken for you guys that uh, for the this we have uh, synthesized uh, some taking a uh, some acyclic chelator uh, and this is the targeting moiety and then we have red label with 99 technetium and you see a very beautiful uptake in the brain but what is the specific region i have taken this slide that what i want to convey here that if you look into these uh, uh, work Uh, that uh, as i have told you that we can even go to the receptor levels so you see that this is the image which only indicate that how much uptake in the brain has gone or how much uh, after crossing the blood brain barrier how much the the radio level compound has reached to the brain but in this experiment we were even able to perform or able to understand in which part of the brain and how much compound is going it is just, it is going to the stratum and how much is going to the cortex how much it is going to cerebrum and how much remain in the rest of the brain so that's why that's how we can see its specificity towards the dopamine receptor or serotonin receptor so that is the beauty of the imaging agent and uh, and uh, the one another important work which is the the you know advanced field now the people are working on the alzheimer disease is alzheimer disease is like uh, we lost uh, in terms of in the layman uh, we 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 lose your memory but why we lose our memory it's like uh, due to the aggregates of the a beta peptides so what we did in this particular uh, work uh, we have uh, synthesized some uh, Uh, peptide which we have uh, modified by certain acetylation 
or by putting some linker or, and uh, then we try to target the A beta peptide that it will not aggregate and not leads to the, the amylide aid. And then we were very successful in doing this and we have a very beautiful result. So we have done certain, uh, we have done molecular modeling, then we have checked it that the aggregation is taking place or not, not uh, and uh, then we have proved this, uh, its efficacy in the banana flies by the neurobehavioral assay. And recently, we have also worked on um, on the another brain imaging agent, uh, which is we have used for the development of the neuroid growth, and that also have, we have proved its its efficacy see, in uh, in different part of the brain. And it is also important uh, to understand the biodistribution of your uh, design or synthesized pharmaceutical. So whatever it you are synthesizing or injecting in animal or human, it must not uh, to, uh, remain in the body, it should be excreted. So that's why you have to see at which part actually it is going. And you see that we could understand that it is how much amount is the heart, lung, liver, kidney and stomach, intestine and the brain it's going on and at a different time interval. And if you look at the kidney, because this is the excretion way that how this particular compound or radiolabel pharmaceutical is excreted from the body, which is very important. So here they have taken the renal route. So that is uh, the important thing. So that's what we are doing uh, at InMass. So an InMass is uh, with full of facilities is uh, we have the NMR mass, we have a peptide synthesizer, we have a flesh chromatography, we have in-house cyclotron, we have hot cell, uh, we have a chemistry module to doing the radio level chemistry and the solid targetry. So, so that's how I would like to end uh, my talk here. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I would, uh, uh, you know, end my talk with the two things. The first is, the important thing is not to stop questioning because the curiosity has its own reason for existing. That is the quote by the Albert Einstein. And uh, the second thing I would like to ask you all, and I would like to first thank my director in mass, uh, Dr. A.K. Mishra, scientist G, and my whole uh, um, uh, in mass team. He, uh, and then I would like to ask you all that uh, any one of you has heard uh, yesterday, Man Ki Baat by our Honorable Prime Minister. आप किसी ने कल मन की बात जो हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने कही थी किसी ने सुना था क्या दक्षिणा नो मैम आई गेस नॉट मैम आई हैवेंट हर्ड ओके सो मैं उनकी कुछ बातें उन्होंने साइंस डे को लेकर मोटिवेट करने के लिए कुछ बातें कही थी जो मुझे बहुत अच्छी लगी और मैं उनको हिंदी में ही बोलना चाहूंगी उन्होंने बताया कि टेक्नोलॉजी ने हमारी जीवन में और हमारी डेली लाइफ में एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट जगह बना ली है कौन सी टेक्नोलॉजी कितनी अच्छी है कौन सी टेक्नोलॉजी का हम बेहतर इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं ये तो सब हम बहुत अच्छे से जानते हैं या इस चीजों से तो हम भली भांति परिचित हैं बट उन टेक्नोलॉजी का आधार क्या है उन टेक्नोलॉजी के पीछे साइंस क्या है ना तो वो हम समझने की कभी कभी कोशिश करते हैं और ना ही वो हम अपने परिवार में अपने बच्चों के साथ अपनी फैमिली के साथ अपनी स्टूडेंट्स के साथ शेयर करते हैं उन्होंने ये रिक्वेस्ट किया कि हम सब अपने बच्चों में अपने स्टूडेंट में एक साइंटिफिक टेम्परामेंट विकसित करने की जरूरत है जिसके लिए हमें छोटे छोटे प्रयास करने चाहिए और उन छोटे छोटे प्रयासों को करने के लिए उन्होंने कुछ एग्जाम्पल दिए जैसे हम लोग अपने हम आप और हम सब लोग मोबाइल यूज करते हैं घरों में हम लोग रिमोट यूज करते हैं या लैब्स में हम लोग कैलकुलेटर यूज करते हैं अगर हम इन छोटी छोटी बातों को ही अपने घर में अपने बच्चों के साथ अपने स्टूडेंट्स के साथ डिस्कस करें कि इन चीजों के पीछे क्या साइंस है तो इस तरीके से, से हम एक साइंटिफिक टेम्परामेंट बचपन से ही कल्टीवेट कर सकते हैं और अगर हम बचपन से ही साइंटिफिक टेम्परामेंट कल्टीवेट कर सकते हैं तो इसको हम राष्ट्र निर्माण के मुद्दों में आगे बहुत आसानी से यूज कर सकते हैं तो उन्होंने बहुत बताया कि यही हमारी देश के प्रति कलेक्टिव एंड साइंटिफिक जिम्मेदारी है that we have to develop a scientific temperament. So I would also request in addition to our Manini Pradhan Mantri ji that you all should 
learn from whatever you see from outside that what is the science behind that you not only learn yourself you discuss among self and then that's how you can you know develop a scientific temperament and which is which is actually the need of the hour in the india so so here i would like to conclude and thanks um, and thank you all of you for the patience listening i hope i will be able to communicate and motivate a bit it uh, and uh, thank you very much bravo i'm awestruck by the session and i hope all of you are captivated too thank you ma'am for delivering such fascinating lecture on integrated approach for molecular imaging you truly threw light on the requisite topics for instance application in archaeology biomedical sciences radio pharmaceuticals and many more i hope all the students were able to fathom and found the session comprehensible i want to remind all of you that the feedback forms link will be posted in the chat box shortly e certificates will be provided to all the participants subjected to the submission of the feedback form now i would like to cordially invite dr parul singh for taking up the question and answer session over to you ma'am yeah uh thank you palak and th uh, thank you dr ronak for motivating our young minds to learn new things and to develop the scientific uh, temperament and to work hard towards with the full dedication i believe all the participants got benefited from the talk and hereby i would like to pay my sincere gratitude to sir c v raman for giving us such a wonderful technique that is raman spectroscopy which find application in every area of science ranging from the material science to the label free imaging technique for the screening of various diseases and as the dr rona mentioned the word soap sir c v raman that ask the right question and nature will open the door to her secrets so floor is now open for the questions please post your questions in the chat box and uh, dr ronak will be happy to clear your doubt yes yes the first question is from uh, dr aparna shekhar is this technique available in hospitals in our country uh this technique uh, not the technique because uh, for this kind of a technique or radio isotope you have to have a aerb approval that is the atomic energy regulation board so this is available with our institute some private company is also synthesizing those kind of a radio tracers but technique in terms of the cameras like a spec camera and the pet camera is available in the every hospitals so if i uh, let's say talk about the fdg which is generally clinically used and in every hospital so we do synthesize at our center the f18 radio label fluorodeoxyglucose and we send it to the different hospital in the early morning at 7 am um, so they reach to the hospital by 9 am so as such hospital does not have these kind of a technique peak peak because they are they are not uh, they are, you know they are mbbs and doctors so they don't, don't have a chemistry background so they don't want to synthesize it so they take it from us or from or nowadays some private companies also there and uh, for the one prerequisite that you need to have a aerb approval but country but hospital do use these kind of a radio tracers from taking from us or from any other uh, 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 private companies i hope i will be able to answer to dr pan thank you and of the next question is how are the radio isotopes employed for the infectious detect infection detection question is from palak pal hmm. so so palak uh, if you will go to the infection so what will happen in the infection actually so uh, it will be there are a lot of biochemical changes will taken place in those kind of infections or uh, that's i have told you also that accordingly uh, actually the infection also like what type of infection you are looking for like you are looking at the infection in the wound healing or you are looking at the infection in the tumor there will be a different approaches for that so you can tag with the uh, the appropriate molecule with the 99 technetium or with the f18 and then you can go ahead and look into the det detection for the infection also on that particular part let's say in the wound healing if i talk about uh, the infection is a major problem and so you can synth uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, take an appropriate radio isotope which will be targeting the infection and then uh, radio tracer can give you those kind of an imaging thank you uh, the next question is from harshita that what cancers are not detected by the blood test 
what cancers are not detected by the blood test. Uh, cancer uh, cannot be detected by the blood test because they will, uh, they, in the blood test, what do you see? Uh, is, is Harshita is online? Harshita, what do you see in the blood test? You will answer yourself this question. Is Harshita is online? Harshita? No. Okay. So actually, uh, it's a very simple uh, question that why you can't detect the blood test. So what you see in the blood test, you see only the, uh, the elevated levels. So you can have an idea that you have a marker for the cancer, but you cannot detect that what cancer, what severity, what extent that will not be detected by the, the blood test for sure. But you can definitely see the, the change in the marker that can give you a hint that person is possibly is going to have uh, the cancer. But then you have to confirm from the diagnostic imaging part or only. Uh, pa uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Parul, can I just say you one thing? I, I have to go for the, the lecture which is going to be held within my institute. Okay, I okay. would like to answer all those questions in detail for sure but uh, you can send it to my email id and give my phone number to those uh, people who have asked this question i will be very happy to answer those questions and in detail okay. and i'm very sorry uh, due to the time time constraint right now i will not be able to answer those questions and so, so extremely sorry for this okay it's okay then th uh, thank you once again dr ronak and uh, all the participants can send their question directly to Dr. Ronak. We will provide the email ID. And, and also will... you can give my phone number to them. So if yeah, yeah. you want to discuss in the detail, we can discuss at large also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Ronak, for mm. joining us. And now I invite Dr. Bhavani Shankar, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, to provide formal vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. But before that, I would like to answer the Aswani sir question. He has asked, yeah. can we use F19 in place of F18? F18, yes. Uh, sir, for detecting, uh, no, because F19 will be paramagnetic. And uh, we have to use for diagnostic, we are using a uh, radio tracers. So for paramagnetic detecting in MRI, we can use the F19, but not in the SPECT and PET. Hope you got the answer, Dr. Aswani. Dr. Bhavani Shankar. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Parsing, for providing me this opportunity. Am I able to you? Yes, you are audible. Yes, you are. Department of Chemistry, Ms. Pandu I am pleased to extend both of thanks to the esteemed speaker, Dr. Rana for her. So your voice is not clear. Uh, Dakshina, can you hear, sir? Uh, Ma'am, the voice is cracking. Um, yeah. Ma'am, I think uh, he might have opened the stream uh, side by side. That might be the reason the uh, we can hear him. Oh. Okay. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're clearly audible. Okay. okay. So, on behalf of the Department of Chemistry, this Bandhu College, I am privileged to extend a vote of thanks to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Ronak, for her inspiring talk on the topic Integrated Approach for Molecular Imaging, delivered on the occasion of National Science Day. Thank you very much, ma'am, for making us aware about molecular imaging techniques being used for visualization, characterization, and measurement of biological processes at molecular level and at alliance as potential MRI contrast agents, designing specific imaging probes, radio pharmaceuticals, and their application in biological science, particularly in diagnosis of different types of cancer, will certainly help 
in improving human health thank you very much dr ronak for sparing your valuable time with us it was an excellent and thought provoking talk we are great, grateful to our principal professor rajiv agrawal vice principal professor kamal kumar gupta coordinator dbt star college scheme dr ik singh coordinator iqac doc department of chemistry professor devanandan kumar for gracing the occasion with their presence and inspiring us we extend our gratitude to all participants from this bandhu college and other college and also institution from delhi and outside A special thanks to colleagues from our fellow institution under v2s patigri college manipur for joining us we would like to thank technical team of dr monica bazaz student volunteers non teaching staff and faculty members for your constant support and active participation last but not the least i wish to thank dr aparna sekar program convener of this event all for making this event a grand success thanks again over to you miss palak thank you so much sir for your cheerful words and what an enthralling question and answer session it was so in a nutshell thank you all and do follow the deshbandhu's youtube channel the telegram channel and the department's website for getting in touch and knowing about the further lectures we'll meet again with another such exuberant and lively session stay high spirited and blissful and in the end i would request dr lena agarwal to end up the meeting thank you so much